what aspects of the Muslim religion, what practices are associated with the name of God? So thank you for this question. I think this is a very multi-dimensional question. But just there was uh, uh, another question before that. So in Islam, we consider there's only one creator and one God. And that is Allah, but he has many, many names. So we do not just associate that, you know, this particular name has to be with the God. As long as you consider that is the creator. You can call it nature, you can call it God, you can call it Ilah, you can, you can call any name you feel like it. Because there is no boundaries of the names of the God. We cannot understand his attributes. Since we cannot understand his attributes uh, in compass, just like we, we discussed that he is timeless and these all boundaries and names are for us to understand him. But we cannot understand him entirely. So for that reason, we will never know all of his attributes and all of his names. However, as long as you have this understanding that he is the ultimate creator, then that is the God we worship. Now, how do we worship it? So in Islam, there is a structure given. Uh, and basically, Islam also is, there's lots and lots of commonalities with the, the religion. However, we follow the footsteps of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and we follow Quran uh, as basis. So in Quran, God says, and in Quran, we do not even take the translation of Quran as Quran because these are the true words of God and nobody can translate the <coughs> words of God completely. So there is one verse in Quran, was Rabbik wa tabattal alayhi tabtila, which means there's a lot of rhythm in Quran. Uh, so it says, was kurisma rabbik, say the name of your Lord, Rabb, was kurisma rabbik, say the name of your Lord, was kurisma rabbik, wa tabattal alayhi tabtila, means, and say with so much concentration, that you basically leave everything else around. So this talking about that whole, that zero point where nothing mm -hmm. is between you and God. And that's what I call is a magnetic flux. We, our eye, our nose, our seeing power, our thinking power, all that is a creation of God. Hence, it has connectivity. Now, when we take everything out, that connectivity becomes you know, godly connectivity. And then there is actually the saying of Prophet Muhammad that a time comes with the concentration that a human person's hand become God's hand. Person's eye become God's eye. Person, you, whatever you do, if you say something, it happens right away. So that is a very, very high stage. So God is in us in different forms. But then you know, it is up to us that how much clear visibility we have based on our actions. Now, there are two types of structures. One is um, what is called hukukul ibad, right of people. And the other one is hukukullah, right of God. So, right of people means that there are certain rights. If you, so, so the right of God may be, for example, praying, okay, and right of people is that if I owe you some money, I give you back. Or there are several rights of people which are defined. This is obligated on me. If somebody in my community die, I go in, in that person's funeral. If nobody from my community goes, then everybody is sinful. But if some people go, at least one person of that locality go, then this take care of everybody else. If you sneeze, I must say God bless you, otherwise I take, a, take your right. So this, it, it, it's common in Christianity as well, so, but it is a right. Likewise, if somebody invite me, I must go, unless I have some solid reason. So these are the right of people, right of neighbors, many, many other rights, but I'm just giving a few examples. But then comes to right of God, which basically then uh, there are like all five pillars of Islam. The first thing is, that you say shahada means you witness and you believe in it and you act upon it that there is no God but one God. Okay, so that's the very first thing, that's the first door you get into. And then the next one is that you pray five times a day. So that is actually the morning prayer, 
the mid-afternoon prayer, the afternoon prayer, the sunset prayer, and the prayer before sleeping. Okay, and there are certain ways to pray, and that's the reason I was asking asking you. And in Quran, God says, "Work out my rakin. Do bow yourself, bend yourself with the people who are bending, uh, you know, uh, bending uh, with you." So that bending was also common with Judaism and Christianity. And then, so there are some other practices that you know you have seen Muslims praying. So I don't need to explain that. But basically, it's the humility showing, again, taking yourself out. And showing your ultimate gratitude, uh, and then of course the next one is is fasting. And fasting is not just a people, you know, uh, right of God, but right of people as well. Because you are thinking and feeling how hunger and 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 thirst can, you know, what can it bring you? And be grateful to God for His bounties, and also think for others and share with them. Uh, and then of course is doing Hajj. Once in a lifetime, that's really the fifth one. If you have money, God has blessed me, and I have gone to pilgrimage to Mecca and Medina, and and but the most important one, which I forgot, is the charity. So every Muslim is supposed to give at least two and a half percent of your, uh, you know, earning after your utilization. So you give two and a half percent. You don't have to give to a church. Matter of fact, we don't give it to a church. We give it to the person who's needy. And the needies are defined that it comes to walakrabina bulisailin. First, your 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 nearest people, your in people in your kinship, okay. And then you know next and next and next and next. So so these are structural way of praying and practicing Islam. Uh, and then on top of it, that you also say the name of God. So let's say waskuris marabik watabatta lalehi tabtila, and that's a mystic way as well. So saying the name of God, I believe personally and have seen there are many, many attributes of God. I think if you take certain attributes with the meaning and you basically uh, say that attribute over and over, you see the reflection of that attribute in you. And then you also get the blessing of that as well. So uh, and, and it also depends on how you show your love with God and how sincere you are when you are Saying then attribute just like I I said was kurist marabik what abatta lalehi tabtila do you try to take yourself away from everything the whole universe from you and just try to um, I'll say get totally lost in that particular attribute and then a stage comes where you get that attribute on your personality so that's kind of how we see it. We have that uh, practice of charity like you, that is 10% uh, of uh, uh, you know, wages or whatever we receive. But the persons who cannot do that, then as I said earlier, you do it by other forms, maybe by physical form, by helping, you know, like we go and do seva of the needy, you know, you can do that. And secondly, see, the and that's the reason I was talking about the right of people. Yeah, right. Of the people. right of people is that seva what you're talking yeah. about. So, so, and the charity was talking about. Yeah. So, yes. The, it is the fifty percent of Islam mm -hmm. is in right of people, okay. and the other fifty percent is the other practices, which are basically called right of God. But that is also for you to make you better and connect you, right. and that so that you become a right person. It's kind of circle. Mm -hmm. It ha one helps the other. Right. One. But here, you know what? Yeah, you're right. But what I mean, we think is that you know, doing seva and simran goes simultaneously. Our prayers yeah. and you know, doing seva are simultaneously. But that is of course the amount that we take out. Another thing that is a final difference, or is that we don't have any fasting in our this thing. You have fasting in Hinduism, you have fasting over there. Yes. We don't have any fasting. I mean, we are not required to fast. But of course, what we are required to do is daily, you eat the right amount, you know, that your body needs. Even a little overeating that you do is almost like poison for the body. But our way of thinking is that if you are, like there's a very nice composition uh, in the Guru Granth Sahib, which says, Gopal Tera Artha, he says, I'm going to worship you. But how do you expect me to worship you on an empty stomach? When I'm thirsty, when I'm hungry, my thoughts are there. How am I going to come back to you? So I need food, I need clothing, I need a good house, I need everything to be able to pray for you. Simran is the one thing where with concentration, but again, like you said, it's to the body movement. What it says is that Antar Gur Aradhana, hmm. you remember that God in your heart, you see it with your eyes, you hear it with your ears, and you chant with your mouth. 
So all your senses are involved in remembering it. So in that way, it's a continuous prayer and it's a continuous way of doing everything. But it's a little simpler. Like we just, you know, just think of that one formless Y guru as we call it. You may call it any name. So when you say why, you, it's all the entire universe that comes, or you say ik onkar, that is, you know, when you say ik onkar, like common to own, mm -hmm. it's the whole universe that you're remembering. So that comes. So I think I, I just want to add this. It, it, for, for one person, if something, we cannot say that my way is simpler, the other way is, you know, more difficult. Exactly. I don't think it's a good idea to compare because for you, you, you might find one method simpler, the other person may find it more tedious. You may look at one thing in one direction, the other person. So there are different directions, just like different rivers are going to the same ocean. For everybody who has their practice, who has their different religious practice, you know, we all find things that resonate with us right. about our religions. And it, we, we have our religious differences, but that's how, that's how everybody can connect with God, is that there's something out there that matches what they feel in their heart and what makes sense to them. You know, the commonalities and what the kids are trying to do is really get to the core of there's similarities, there's differences. The first thing is knowledge. It's having, you know, you know, what we know, what we don't know, and then how do we go forward? So understanding and, um, you know, the core I think one strong commonality is it's selflessness. It's um, it's helping the poor, helping those in need, providing. All the yes, yes, and I think that in and of itself is one of the most important things for our kids to move forward into their interpretation of and, and th you know they're they're taking everything forward as one but in every religion in my mind has kind of operates on four different planes right i mean at the highest level is the spiritual plane right where we kind of we, we are seeing a shining kind of commonality right and i'm today i mean in fact today was the first time i kind of heard that even in islam they kind of really you know look at that highest level right where there's you no know, Similar to the Ekonkar concept, right? One universe. I need to know more about that actually, right? So that spiritual level, I think there is high level of commonality and the more we dwell in the spiritual plane, I think there is definitely peace in the world, right? The next is basically the cultural level where it's kind of a display of you know, different ways of living, ways of habits basically, right? the kind of way, the way we dress, the kind of you know, religious festivals we uh, celebrate, that's 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 the diversity part. There's nothing offensive there. It's just the way we live, basically, right? And that is something that we should all embrace. I, I like your word. We don't tolerate. Tolerate is basically no. I don't like it, but I'm going to put up with it for some time, right? You embrace. You kind of look at the diversity and embrace the diversity. That should be the spirit in the cultural realm, right? Ritualistic is a bit more. The third plane is rituals, where you know sometimes you know like in the the practices, the religious practices of how you actually worship the god. And so on. it's more scriptural, and they're definitely different. Uh, different. So, like you said, you know, people fast, don't fast, fast on certain days, fast a month. So these are all operating procedures of just like different companies, you know, you know, operate differently, right? They have different company policies, standard operating procedures. So we'll, let's leave it at that, actually, right? And uh, we don't have to dwell into that. It's just a way of, you know, the uh, implementation of the religion as such. The fourth and the more dangerous level is the political level, right? The fourth layer is where you know we want to move out of all the time, and some for some reason we gravitate towards that, and that's where all the strife and the conflicts happen. Is the political level where every religion has a political connotation, and of course the politicians also kind of fuel, like you know, unrest and fuel the differences. That's where you fuel the differences basically. That's the bottommost layer, the political layer, and the highest layer is spiritual, where you look at the more the unison of ideas, right? I think we should move in the direction actually. Right, and I think when we talk to our children, right, I think that's where I mean you you kind of don't dwell on this and highlight this, which the whole world, the whole media, the whole system, the society basically highlights this part of it, and the ignorance, right, and we don't know exactly about the religion. For example, I think in this forum we all realize that the, that one God concept, but not all everybody sees it that way. 
so how do you we how do we move from the political level to the spiritual level is the, is the challenge basically i think for all of us if knowledge is not there that is the biggest thing where you know strife and misunderstanding takes place mm -hmm. but if i have the knowledge you know like i have some hindu friends i know on a friday or certain day i mean they uh, don't eat this or on their work when they have they don't eat uh, the grains right you have a day so i if i know that i prepare that way it's like uh, showing respect to them that you had one question small one that how do we make our children you know believe or come up to the concept of that one god right mm -hmm. i have a very small i mean session here at a very nice book and in that said simran or remembrances of god everybody practice they have their own but this the general one he said that is very nice that you just every day pray with the thought that god is near me who's ever god it is he's near me he is with me and because of that he is he doesn't have any disease he doesn't have any worry he doesn't have any uh, you know anxiety he's all peace he's all bliss so if he's near me i'm going to experience all those qualities we have a line in our this thing man tu jyot swarup hai apna mool pehchan my mind you are god's light recognize that that light is within you like a sun you know the rays that they come they come to everybody you are a ray of that sun of that god so experience that he is near you that light is within you and that light is shining in everybody else so that just a small little daily prayer you know just a thinking small way that he is with all of us not only me with all of us he is there he is protecting me he is all bliss he is all kindness he is my mother and father he knows what i need he is going to provide me for that all that i have to do is that get out of that i that i am doing anything it's through him that i'm doing service to other people mm -hmm. it is through him that i am you know serving others and it is through him only that i see his light so when we talk about that you know and we just have the little prayers like that the nearness probably that might help them to realize that god is there who's ever got it maybe there's ultimately just one god at the end of the day this because particularly this is arranged by the kids and it is about them and um, hopefully in the next dialogue we will have you know our next generation with us as well so we kind of learn from each other there's a lot to learn from the next generation honestly so i i would say that i'm always you know concerned i have three sons that you know how they see the world and this is this is how i grew up and that's how i want to see them that you know you could have certain you know color glasses but that doesn't mean this is the only color out there mm -hmm. okay and the most important thing is that you are connecting with the creator and if you're connecting with the creator you cannot connect with him or you cannot be grateful to the creator if you are not grateful to the humanity so if you are grateful to the humanity then you are grateful to the creator look what he has done for you what how many bounties you have but you cannot be grateful to him if you are not grateful to all the people around you and if you become grateful thankful a positive person then honestly the attributes of god will come in you and you will become his reflection so that happens by respecting each other by giving other people their right and by positive thinking and looking at you know look at yourself there how many mistakes you have and you are pointing to somebody else's mistake focus on your mistakes and other people's goodness and then you will have more goodness in you because god clearly promise that you know when you call upon me i rest, i return when you ask for you know forgiveness i give forgiveness when you you know are grateful i give you more so let's hope we all be grateful to god but to be grateful to god we all to be grateful and thankful to all of all each other and especially to our next generation thank you for joining us on one light one love if everybody has any closing comments they'd like to make for me i have just been so grateful to listen to everybody's stories and to everybody's um whatever they've wanted to share about their religions and um it's been wonderful for us to come together and experience that together so if joanne you would like to start 
with some closing comments. One Light, One Love has been inspiring and I'm grateful and humble for the opportunity to be here. I'm looking forward to what the kids have learned and their input um, uh, from this session. And I thank my fellow um, guests as well. One Light, One Love. Again, I must say it's been a very humble experience and learned a lot from the other faiths and their practices. And I think the children are doing very well, but I would really have to share it for the next time if they have this dialogue, is what questions they have. I see we want to address their questions because their point of thinking is different than from us. Most of us parents, we want to really, you know, uh, ingrain what we think. We want them to do what we have been doing, what we have been practicing. But I, I think it's be much better if they come up with the questions which are have, they have a practical way of experiencing their faith in which they are growing up and how to have respect for other people and how to, you know, really find their identity in this, uh, in the different faiths that are there. That's most important. And I'm talking this particularly for people who are different. For example, like in the Muslim faith and in the Sikh faith, we have a particular identity where, you know, they wear turbans and wherever they go, they just stand out. So people, you know, they just don't have much tolerance for them, what we realized, or the remarks that they pass. So, you see, the children have to have certain questions, how to deal with those types of uh, situations, how they can, you know, not react, but respond to those things and how to live still very nicely. So that would be very nice if the questions come up from the children, their problems, what their thinking is, how they, how they want to deal with the situations. Thank you very much, and it's been very nice being here. I would say um, ditto to everything that has already been said. Uh, I agree wholeheartedly. I do think that we uh, come to refine our own sense of faith and the practice of our faith in the world um, by uh, engaging in the conversations ourselves. Um, so giving opportunities for um, the youth members of the community who are creating this programming to do that is, um, I think, part of the formation of their own uh, faith. Um, I, I always enjoy being part of these kinds of dialogues with uh, representatives from other faiths uh, because uh, there was an article that I was just reading in the New York Times yesterday, David Brooks, uh, reflecting on the nature of the society we find ourselves in today um, and the lack of uh, um, tolerance for real diversity and pluralism in society, ethnic, cultural, religious. And uh, what we're doing here is in fact an example of what he expressed was so important that um, we have the ability to not just be tolerant but actually embrace yeah. diversity when we have um, a sense of security in our own identities. And so when you're part of an opportunity to be in a conversation like this, and through having studied and learned something about your own faith, and then to being able to express it to others, you know, we stand in the um, strength of a faith that serves each of us individually, the faith that we practice, um, but can come into a space like this and be so deeply enriched by those points of uh, commonality, but also those points of difference that help us to refine and understand who we are uh, in relation to each other. Um, this is the kind of work that actually builds strong, pluralistic, diverse communities. So it's, it's more than just what do we believe about God. It has a deeper purpose and it's something that more of us in the larger community would benefit from doing with each other. Yeah, One Light, One Love has been a very uh, enlightening program for me. I think it was great to interact with all the other guests, basically, from different walks of life and different faiths. I think a lot of cobwebs in my understanding about other religions were kind of removed today. But at the same time, it was very uh, thrilling, I would say, to kind of see that the commonality at the highest level, at the spiritual level, which is what we need to get move towards. Um, so I think it was very good to see all the young Young kids basically kind of organize this program and I think this behooves well for the future. So 
uh, hopefully they'll kind of grasp some of these concepts i think they come pure basically right they probably are uncontaminated to begin with and the world contaminates them so i hope that you know we help you know, help i think this kind of forums will build basically help them kind of help uh, clear their understanding and you know remove all the misconceptions there are and take them towards a higher level of existence at the end of the days right i mean we talked about a lot of philosophical concepts and so on right uh, but ultimately you know it, it's about how we live as one in the society itself so one of my gurus basically was saying right we need to move from being a somebody i mean he put it in a very succinct and simple form right we need to all move from being somebody to being a nobody to becoming everybody so the so the, what what that basically means is you know when you are somebody you carry a lot of ego with you right and then you drop the ego and you become a nobody but then when you move from nobody to becoming everybody you see the oneness in the whole universe basically right even if you lose the int, uh, your individual identity you start seeing everyone as you know as one as one of the same being itself so in, in fact lord krishna in the bhagavad gita when he kind of closes his uh, his exposition to arjuna he basically says yomam pashyati sarvatra sarvam cha mai pashyati tasya ham na pranashyami sachame na pranashyati which basically says that you no know, the one who sees me meaning god in everybody he is basically reached the highest state of existence and i think that's the ultimate purpose of all this exercise right if you can see that you know it's the same god which exists in all of us we are all the same basically i mean we may be carrying different titles different labels but the same at the end of the day we are all one and that's the kind of you know uh, spirit with which we kind of you know we need to move out of this uh, discussion and i think i agree with what uh, you were saying in terms of what should be the next steps for the meet itself in terms of having the kids more involved in preparing the questions and actually maybe even have them participate as part of these discussions to see where they are with respect to their understanding and concepts right that would have to make good and i'll just close by one small prayer basically a universal prayer which says you know sarve <coughs> sarve cha sukhina santu sarve santu niramaya sarve bhadrani pashyantu मा कश्चित दुख भाग भवेत व्हिच बेसिकली सेज दैट यू नो लेट एवरीबॉडी बी लेट देयर बी पीस इन एवरीबॉडी एंड लेट देयर बी नो वरीज फॉर एवरीबॉडी इन दिस वर्ल्ड सो इट्स अ यूनिवर्सल प्लेयर नॉट आइसोलेटिंग पीपल अगेन बाय कास्ट क्रेड और रिलीजन और एनीथिंग दैट्स ऑल थैंक यू वेरी मच या यू नो जस्ट एड दिस दैट आई थिंक अबाउट दैट हाउ हु वी आर एंड वी बिकम वेरी बिग बट इन रियलिटी इफ यू लुक एट दिस अर्थ वी आर नॉट अ डॉट इन आवर ओन गैलेक्सी and then our galaxy is very very small in the the whole cluster we are in and then our cluster is again very small in terms of the other galaxies and 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 the whole universe and then god is the creator of all that and then you see yourself who you are you're absolutely nothing nothing but then there is something make you special which make you think like you are something what is that and that is the godliness in our, us if we become you know uh, uh if we don't have those attributes and if we become like animal then it's no big deal nothing but when you have the attributes of god where you start seeing beyond your own needs that's what make you special and connect you which is nothing to everything you are nothing and it create it's connect to you to the the god who created everything imagine that how strong this linkage and how important that is and now how does that transform to our young generation is the most important thing and that is where i'm saying having this dialogue and listening to their view and participating this is not just us lecturing and they're listening yes we do have some experience and we've gone through some you know but they have their own purity so in this way i would hope that in the future when we have this dialogue it's a you know dialogue together with the youth on a round table and having them you know ask questions and then answer so we can learn from them and they can learn from our experience so i think one light uh one one yeah. one one light one love that basically you can see that throughout this discussion and that's also very very important that message propagate
Because a lot of time there is so much misconception out there. People don't understand that who we're talking about. We are ultimately all of us talking about the creator, the God. And now if that message goes out there and if you can somehow propagate that message, then honestly that's the best thing you would be doing. And then you would be spreading the light of God through the love of God. So thank you so much for coming up with this idea of one light, one love and, and setting this up. We cannot thank you enough, guys. We hope you enjoyed our show today, One Light, One Love, and we'd love to hear your feedback in the comments section. Please remember to like and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you.